very important and most important point is the false hum. Junior surgeon or inexperienced surgeon might go and chop the hump straight away at the beginning of the procedure and at a later stage. If you look at this case, you can see a hump there. And you can see a hump there with also underprojected tip and short columnar wide, wide tip, round tip. But now you should differentiate between the false hump and the true hump. If you go and, and excise or push down the false hum, you will end as a uh, you will end at the end of the procedure with an augmentation of procedure, with all the problem of the grafting. I mean the floating, the displacement, the warping, the demarcation, and the absorption of the of the graft. Therefore, you have to make a very good assessment at the beginning of the procedure in order to differentiate between the true hum and the false hum. So when we examine the patient in the clinic. We did the measurement from there to there, which was about 2.2 centimeters. 2.2 centimeters are absolutely a normal, normal height. Normal height usually runs between 2.2 to 0.3, sometimes in the big, big nose is 2.5 maximum. So therefore, if you excise this, 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 this uh, bony motion, which I mean the false hump, you will end with an Asian nose. This patient is an European patient, she came from Portugal, especially from, to have her operation in, in Dubai by myself. If I excise her hump, she will end with an Asian face, an Asian nose. Therefore, it's very important to differentiate between false hump and true hump. So in this case, you do not need at all to touch the bony portion. Now, as you have seen, I have done oblique dome division. I preserved fully the lateral cross there. I did not do marginal incision. I did not expose the lateral cross. I did not borrow or steal any part of the lateral cross. We div obliquely divide the dome at the junction between the intermediate and the lateral cross. We delivered both intermediate cross and medial cross to one side. We considered, as you see there, a long columnar strut, strong columnar strut, and then a nice table graft. And you are pushing this, this structure inside. And you will see now how much table rejection we achieved. Look, there's no more hump. The hump has gone because it was a false hump. It was not, not a, a true hump. You see the dorsum is going quite straight now with nice supra tip break and uh, tip double break and nicely stretched columella with very nice nasolabial angle and, and no more columella show. So this is the procedure now. How many minutes? Seems maybe only, only, only 10 minutes or 12 minutes. We have reshaped this, this patient nose in about 12 minutes only. Okay, sorry, 13 minutes. You can see the time now. 13 minutes or 14 minutes. We have fully reshaped the patient nose and transformed the nose from a nose as which it looks like a hump and under the white tip to a very nice, very nice profile, very nice profile with nicely projected tip, nice tip elevation, projection, definition, refinement, and quite nice a straight dose. And in some cases, not on, in some cases, you may have to put a small subratibial graft. And I don't need in this case. In some cases, you may have to consider a small subratibial graft in this area, for example, like this. But I don't think I need that in this case. The patient has got a very thin skin on the dorsum. And I think if I do put any graft there, in some cases, but not in this case, you may have to consider a subratibial graft to bridge the tip with the, with, the, with the dorsum, I mean, to, to make the tip blend nicely with the dorsum, you may have to consider in some cases a supra tip graft. I don't think in this case we will need. Let me check anyway. I think if I put the graft there, it will go into. Yeah, I see, I can see it there. I don't really fancy putting the graft in this case. I would leave it without grafting. Unless I, I, I crush it and put it there, it would maybe be a good idea. Let me just crush the graft and see if it's going to. Sometimes there is a very small collapse there. This is nicely crushed now, the graft. Nicely crushed and give me the scissors.
Let me see if it's going to work much better now. I already cast the gun. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad, you see now. We bridged the junction between the tip and the dorsum and the bony hump, which was looking as a bony hump. It looks, yeah, it looks slightly better. So we can leave it. So that's it. So I just have uh, like to show this is very important point of the force hump. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching.